Hello. So, uh, Richard has this thing coming out of his body, which looks a bit like the Star Trek sort of Borg episode, but it is a medical device. Indeed. Yeah. Not actually coming out of my body. That's true. <laughs> I did that for dramatic effect, you know. I Just know. so we're all on the same page here. Yeah, okay. Um, so I was uh, in New York at the Sona Studio in New York City, and um, you did this performance that you're going to recreate in a different, different way this time. But um, you were hooked up to the stethoscopes. You were listening to your heart. You were adjusting things. And I was so struck how, how excited you were to experiment in this way. Can you talk about how constraints change how art uh, exists? Sure. So, so what, we're, what we're about to do um, is play a bunch of music uh, from a record that I just made called Music for Heart and Breath. Um, and it's just, what it is is it's chamber music played by mostly classical musicians and myself, who is more of a self-taught musician. Um, but where every single note that we play is either played at the speed of our heartbeats or at the speed of our breathing. Um, and that applies to sort of each individual in the, in the ensemble. Everyone gets to follow their own hearts and gets to follow their own breathing. And at times, we get to follow each other's breathing. And, and how it works changes. And there's a different leader and, uh, at different points. And um, it gets all mixed up. But always what's going on is we're literally playing the speed of our heartbeats, or we're literally playing the speed of our breathing. Um, yeah, so yeah, constraints in art and fastening yourself into something distinctly not human that's made to listen to a deeper human rhythm, a, deep, a deeper sound that's maybe less accessible to us in the moment to moment of life in order to access, possibly access something, a quality within music that is perhaps more deeply human at the end of a piece, at the end of a day, at the end of a performance. Um, but where it also takes some of the control out of your hands in terms of what you're doing. And, and for classical musicians, that's a, that's a scary thing. That's a, that's a leap to take where you're, you're saying, what you're actually going to do is, is obey the things that are going on in, inside of your body um, in terms of playing the music. You're not going to go with all of your training. You're not going to use your breath to enhance how you're playing and get you know make a, a louder note or a strong, play a rhythm more strongly. What you're going to do is follow the fragility or the and the spontaneity of your breath and, um, and the quietude of your heart and the, these tiny little rhythms, you're going to amplify those in, for yourself so that you can hear it. And then what you're going to do is sort of play, you know, play, the, uh, play the intermediary between the rhythm of the heart and the audience. And then when you, I like how the heart becomes kind of part of your audience. And you've played in front of like millions of people. Are they part, or do, how does that relate to when you're Playing music is curious. Um, is it similar at all, or it's? I mean, it's quite different. So, um, so what I do with a lot of my time musically is I play in the band Arcade Fire, which is sort of huge volume, huge band, huge noise, huge crowd, huge energy, huge dynamics. Um, and making this music was actually, this, this was born out of a desire to, to go the absolute opposite way and to kind of balance my musical life with what's the, what's the most intimate and quiet and delicate and small and fragile and unamplified kind of music that I could possibly make. It's a different part of the spectrum. Yeah. I just want to note that um, you know, yesterday when you, when you came in, and I noticed how as uh, an independent musical talent, you'll arrive and a band will appear, and you work with that band. Right. I just noticed, just going to embarrass him a little bit, Richard, I, I noticed how you didn't know all these people, and you just took care of them immediately. Mm. They became your family like for, in, in like zero seconds. And it just struck me how, how artists are often seen not as leaders. Like, oh, artists, you know, they're flaky, they can't you know, hold their whatever kind of thing. But I, I, I've noticed, true. some days, for me too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be fair. But I've noticed that artists, when they're making art that involves more people, they know that their art is the team. Mm. And so I just want to note that I was so impressed when you came in. And you built the team in seconds, mm. and you ran immediately. So I look forward to seeing the results of your team. Well, thank you.